So criminal history is off the table. That's what I yeah, heard. You know, so we can't oh. talk about that time. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, Hi, everybody. How are you doing? It's Tuesday, 5 p.m. Central Time on the Reaper Twitch channel. It's time for the Crow's Nest with uh, Jason and I. Today's, oh, this is the show where we combine gaming and geek culture. Is that right, Justin? Or is that another show that says they do it, but they never do it? You know, at this point, I we can give that tag to all the shows. Whatever, you know. I don't even know anymore. Right, but <laughs> so today we have the great Lord Dave Cecil with us today. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. Doing fine. <laughs> great. Uh, ready for winter to be over. Deep. Yeah. Are you ready to be on the show? That's really the big thing. Um, are you ready to get driven over by the bus? You know, it wouldn't be the first time I've been hit by a bus, but it'll be the first time by this uh -huh. bus. So I've been looking forward to that. So you've been hit by an actual bus before? Well, you know, not recently. But, uh, oh, okay. okay. No. <laughs> hey, I want to stand up and show everybody the dedication you have to this show. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, there's only I'm one not choice. saying oh, that if... That. Yeah. I'm not saying that if you actually buy a T-shirt from our uh, T Public or Zazzle stores or wherever I put those things up, um, that you will be on the show, but I'm not saying you won't be. How about that, J Jason? All right? That's so, very good. I think we should uh, yeah. start having viewers send in themselves in T-shirts, you know, just in front of the pyramids and all that stuff. I think that'd be right. great. Well, what if, it you, is, if you, go ahead. The T-shirt actually makes you a better painter. So um, oh. just wearing this, I proved enough where I would be, you know, asked to be on a show like this. Right. It makes you and, a better person. It's not just a painter. It makes you a better right. person. Well, if you're a better painter, you're a better person. How about that? Yes. Well. Yeah. The better, paint, the better painter you become, the better person you become. Because I'm a really shitty person. But I, I compensate that with practicing. No, all right. I'm glad you said right, it. So, <laughs> hey, Frank's on. Hey, Frank, Rhonda's on. Awesome. Um, Bug lips. You know, uh, Neo Show One Forty Three has been a regular viewer of ours um, for as long as I can remember. So, thank you. Um, big shout out to you. Um, first off, with uh, Dave Cecil, for those that don't know david as well as we know david or lord dave you'll see lord dave pop up on the various twitch streams um you've been coming to ReaperCon. i think i met you at two or three reaper cons ago how many reaper cons have you been to it was uh 2017 so where you refer to okay. uh, the gun yeah. and knife show. The, gun, the last gun and knife show yes <laughs> yeah where we had it there was at the wonderful uh what was the name of that place, Justin? Um, I forget. I just call it the Gun and Knife Show because they, it's yeah, the, the Premier Event Center. Premier Event Center, correct? Yeah. Yes. Premier. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked yeah. it. It had a uh, roller derby oval taped on the floor. It, that was my favorite part of it. It did. Yeah, and I, I liked it. And in, in between, well, in between Reaper Cons, they would have various uh, gun shows, 
and you could go pick up whatever firearm you needed in between. So that's why we nicknamed it the Gun and Knife Show, the premier event, the premier event center. So, um, so how long have you been painting, Dave? What got you into it? Well, what's your origin you story? About... So, yeah. it's where you start counting. Um, I'm sorry. Because Dave. I, I first started painting like early '80s. But I don't know that I would call that uh -huh. painting. Um, so for probably about 10 years, I, I slapped some, you know, testers model paint on miniatures and they, they looked terrible, uh, but they were good enough for our game. And then, you know, uh, as time progressed, I found some of the poly S paints and those worked a lot better. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, you know, I, now what, I started like, what, year, uh, what time frame is this? What year is are, are we talking here in late eighties, mid eighties? Well, eighties was probably the start of it. Um, okay. So early eighties, because I'm old. Um, uh -huh. But <laughs> around the nineties or you know mid nineties, I started painting a little bit better, but still not good. Um, but it was uh -huh. good enough for us. And in those days, I had no backlog. I would buy a miniature and paint it, and then that would be the end of it for a few months. And then I might find another uh -huh. miniature I like. Yeah. Oh, those are the yeah. days. So I oh, like, oh my God. Yeah. I stayed like that until about was it 2012 or 2013 when Bones 1 came around. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. I suddenly found myself with several hundred miniatures. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I started to get a little more serious then. So I, I guess that's when you would start counting. Um, right. But even still, it, it was all for just our tabletop game. There was no thought of competitions or anything like that that didn't start until uh, really around 2016 i started uh, really trying to do you know better work um, so yeah looking back at, at those i still have a few from back in the 80s and and it's it's really funny they're they're you know two or three colors total for the miniature yeah um, yeah so did you, go you right did you from, continue uh, to paint go ahead J go ahead jason step right over me Great. Oh, yeah. I'm the co-host, right? I should be able to get a question in here. Okay. Go did ahead. you go right from uh, regular old Dave to Lord Dave, or did you have like an intermediate step like <laughs> Super Dave or something like that? Okay, so the story behind Lord Dave. So first of all, it's not really a statement of nobility. Um, it's more sarcastically intended. That goes way back really? to when um, I was working at uh, – a neighborhood store you know back in the days when you used to be able to go to stores uh, we had one in our neighborhood and there were uh, I don't know three or four of us they would work there on, on weekends to help clean up the store get things ready stock shelves whatever whatever they needed us to do and uh, the guy who owned the store if you did something stupid he would call you the captain of the guards um, so you know if you like knocked over one of those big pickle jars you know with the the 25 cent pickles in it onto the floor and bust open. He'd say, way to go, Captain the Guards, and we all have to go clean that up. Well, there was a reserved title for something just off the wall, unimaginably stupid. Um, you could be called the Captain of the Royal Guards. So that was rarely used. In fact, I only heard it three or four times. But there was a night where we were all kind of scrambling to get done. He wanted us to mop the floors really good. He was going to have an inspection the next day. So I went into the, you know, the, the mop room and started making some hot water and, and I grabbed a, a bottle of bleach off the shelf and dumped in, I don't know, a good half a gallon of bleach into this mop bucket. And then uh, I thought, man, that, that really stinks. I gotta, I gotta have something to knock that smell out. And there was this bright yellow liquid on, on the wall too. So I, I grabbed it thinking it was, you know, lemon that that would smell better than Clorox. So I proceeded to dump, you know, a good quart of ammonia into that as well. So oh, within minutes, um, we had to clear the store. Uh, there was smoke coming out there, and it, it was pretty toxic. <laughs> so we're out in the parking lot, oh, and yeah. somehow he kicked right over Captain of the Royal Guard, and he said, way to go, Lord Dave, you almost killed us. So um, that kind of stuck with my friends. But when we got to high school, mm -hmm. They were still calling me Lord Dave, and nobody else knew that it was because I was an idiot. Um, they they thought it was kind of cool, you know. Hey, all his friends call him Lord Dave, so I, it just kind of stuck. Some of my D and D characters have carried the title, and you know, here it is, 
many, many years later. And uh, I use it as my screen name on the forums and that kind of thing. But yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing. I, I almost killed us all. So I, I was the honorable, noble Lord Dave because of the level of stupidity of that one incident. <laughs> well, that's that's great. That's a great origin story. Yeah. So now I'll turn it back well, over hey, to Tanner on the program. All right. Um, I wanted to, to show off a few things for those getting ready for RVE. Um, I am going to be painting today the Rutarki, um, sculpted by Jason Wiebe. And so this is the Rutarki right here, kind of a bugbear-ish in the face, at least a little bit. But he's super cool, um, Jason. I think you really did a great job sculpting him. I'm not Thank doing a great you. job. Do you have a back shot? Do you have anything on his back yet? Just a little, just some colors okay. to block it in. Just I hadn't seen, I hadn't so gonna, seen how the back turned out yet. Okay, the back we turned did out little, really well. The front did. We did a little yeah, editing but, on the back to make it cast better. Oh, no, I think it, it turned out really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And then I have um, this guy, this guy, girl. I'm not sure. I think it's a guy. I'm not sure. It could be either. Um, the steampunky programmer person or not steampunk, but, you know, cyberpunk. Um, so that one. And then uh, miniature-wise, and I haven't put it together yet, here is your half of your, what was this guy? This Rutarki Pug. Uh, or or hound, I believe. The Rutarki oh. Orhound. Oh, Rutarki. And here's the other half of it. They just He kind of snaps together. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But he's super cool. Um... Bob Rodolfi's kind of minor space miner dude. He's got a little computer in his hand, um, so that's cool. Well, aren't and those then, aren't those from the faction that does the archaeology, archaeotech? What I, I don't remember. That's the name a really good question that I do not know the answer. Yeah, to. yeah. Unfortunately, I, don't I apologize for that. I haven't memorized the factions yet. Yeah, I think it's Arcos. That's yeah. Arcos. Okay. Oh. I know they're I'm all always one of the paint with the factions. Gene did some wonderful uh, logos for them. We have, um, and and Rhonda Bender, check out Bird with the Brush. I think it's she's going to do it tonight, on. I think it's on the Reaper Twitch channel, or maybe just on her own Twitch channel. Probably the, her own Twitch channel, and I don't know. I'm not sure which one, but. Uh, She's going to be going this more in depth, but here's some of the paints that um, Ron sent. This is the big box. It's really cool. Um, the that box, is the big you can box. see. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of yeah. paint. So the, the, these three don't come with it. So these are the paints that come with the set. And we'll talk about those a little bit. But there was another set, and I, I'm not sure how it's boxed up or anything. There are three really cool colors, really great. Uh, primary kind of colors, the plasma yellow, blue, and, and red. And I put the red out on the palette a little bit. I'll bring it up a little bit. I think I saw those as a bl in a blister when I was perusing the yeah the swag boxes. Super sweet. Super sweet. And the blue is super intense, just super duper intense colors. Um, great, especially for these, for picking out little lights and gizmos or whatever but um they are just going to be so intense that you can knock them back or, or blend them in with other colors and, and enhance the in intensity um rutarki flesh is right here that's one of the colors it is really cool um sort of in the vein of maybe an old ashen brown um and a little bit of my favorite triad of the world of uh uh dusky skin, but yet a little more purpley in there. Um, and then there's a really neat one, uh, synth flesh, super cool. Um, so I've got a few of the colors on the thing. I'm not going to go into it too much, so I don't want to take time away from Dave, David, um, but also don't want to take away from Rhonda going all Rhonda on the colors. So yeah, on my own Twitch channel, Justin needs to relax. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. But yeah, it's going to be on Rhonda's Twitch channel. 
actually, uh, Rhonda's show will be the next show to show up on our channel, guys. So yeah, that's, when uh, is that going to be? That will. I, I need to talk to Rhonda, but probably when after ours. settles down. Y yes. Uh, well, in terms of when during the week, I don't know. But oh, okay. uh, I have to talk to Rhonda about it. But the next new show you guys see will be Rhonda's show. Because Rhonda deserves a show more so than right, we do. Right. Okay. I thought you were talking about the unboxing yeah. show, which I thought was also today. Rhonda's unboxing yeah, show. Maybe I'm she's do she is doing an unboxing show on her Twitch channel That's after right. this at some point. I don't know if it's right after or after she eats dinner. I don't know. Um, maybe Rhonda can say again if she hasn't already and I've missed it. Yes, and Dusky Skin has been retired. Oh, Dusky Skin's been retired. It's one of my favorite triads. I'm still sad about that. All right, David, back to you. As we've done our little uh, shameless promotion for Reaper and RVE. All right, what are you doing for RVE? I'll, I'm going to tie the two together. See how I did that there? Seamlessly. Yeah. That was good. Fantastic. That was a good segue. That's the mark of a pro Thanks. right there. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so I'm doing uh, two classes for RVE. Uh, one is uh, a weathering class. It's very similar to uh, the class that I taught at the other virtual event. Uh, we did the virtual Reaper time. Uh, but I'm also doing a, a class that's realistic horror. Um, so blood, guts, gore, spider webs, those kind of things. So I'm looking forward to both of those. Uh, I haven't taught the gore class since our last live Re ReaperCon, but it was, it was kind of a big hit. So I'm looking forward to that. It's a lot of fun. Cool, cool. You know, the, the, the neat thing about Reaper Virtual Con last summer was I actually got to see some classes and usually when we're at ReaperCon, i'm either teaching or judging or sleeping or you know hiding or something like that i don't get to catch a lot of the other classes that are going on but with when the reaper virtual con i actually sat in for your class and it was awesome i think it was um the weathering class if i'm not mistaken i can't i'm pretty sure that's what it was and it, you did a great job you bring a really great energy to your class um it's you know, it's really inclusive. It's really friendly. It's really encouraging. Um, it's 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 show you show the whole process. You even show, hey, if you mess up, this is what this looks like. Or, you know, don't be don't be discouraged if it goes down this road. It's it's a process, which I thought I was really impressed with. Um, That's high you, praise. I didn't realize I, you were. I, I, oh yeah, no, I don't don't pretend like I, I anything I say is high praise. It's just you know just me talking, <laughs> but. Uh, you teach also um, when we had the re the real in person um, ReaperCon. You taught with Tish Walter, and you taught kid some kid classes, right? Yeah, that was a that was an idea that her and I put together. Um, so you have to go back to around twenty eighteen or twenty seventeen. I noticed that there were a lot of kids sitting around, but there weren't a lot of offerings. There was one or two classes uh, that kids could go in, um, but not much. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, her and I put together a, a series of classes. So the kids painted the the like PC type miniatures in her class, and in my class they painted the monsters. And then Saturday night, those kids brought both miniatures to a D and D game that I ran, um, and they had a blast. Uh, there was, I think there were fifteen or sixteen in her class, um, around that many in my class, but not all the same kids. And then about ten kids mm -hmm. that played the D and D game. So, those 10 kids get to see kind of the, the full spectrum of what we use miniatures for and while we, while we enjoy the hobby so much. Thanks for the raid, Jimmy the Brush. Just showed up with a bunch of uh, Jimmy the Brush fans. Holy crap. Cool. 182 so viewers. Like oh, my God. That might be a record for us. Yeah. Do you like teaching the Lord kids' Dave. class? I do. Um, I enjoy teaching in general. Um, I did say kind of a caveat that year when uh, Tish and I kind of put that together that I was fine with teaching a, a few kids' classes, but I didn't want to become known as the kids' teacher uh, because there are some, mm -hmm. you know, like the Gore class, for example, is not suitable for kids, really. Um, so a, so a there kids, are some kids a kid realistic horror and Gore class is probably right out. That's what you're saying. That's not going to happen. That takes some creativity. Um, I'm not saying it's out, so it's not off the table yet. But yeah, I, I've had a lot of fun with 
with just teaching itself. And, and part of what has helped me with that is, is I'm okay at a lot of things. I'm not really overly great at any one thing, but I can do most things at an okay level. Um, so I look at teaching as a way to, to kind of learn and kind of hone those skills in a little bit. Um, I feel like I improve every time I teach a class. That's a very and good so point. With, um, no. with now, yeah, because you have to think minutes. through the process. Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes you think through your normal processes you just go through and you've just kind of picked up over the time. Now you've got to try to break it down and explain it. And that you always learn something from that. And that's really nice. And like when I've taught my um, basing classes in the past or whatever, people will come up with the most interesting ideas in the class. And I like teaching it because I can just steal all their ideas and reuse them in my future projects, which is nice. And, and Max, I think it was Max Stiles said that, I think I watched your water effects class. That's what I watched was that. Cause he mentioned that he, or Max mentioned that she, they enjoyed your water effects class. Was that what you, did you do that for the last Reaper virtual con? I've done that twice. I did it at the last live con and I did it at, at the mm -hmm. virtual con as well. That started, I, cool. I taught it kind of a general basing class. Um, mm -hmm. it was really high level. Um, and then at the end of that class, some folks were, were talking to me about they really like to learn how to do a, a water base. But I didn't know anything about water mm -hmm. effects at that point. So over the next you know 10 or 11 months, I, I learned everything I could about water effects and, and put it together as, how can I do this in a class? Because some of the dry times are you know a day on some of those, those products. Mm -hmm. So we did it kind of like a kitchen show. Um, I, I came in and everybody started with a blank base and... Uh, we got to a certain point and I said, okay, let's set that to the side. It's going to have to dry for 20 hours. And then I gave them a pre, a pre-made base that was picking up from that point. We took it to the next step and I said, okay, set that to the side. That's going to need four hours and then let's finish it off now. So they left with three bases in various states and it, it was a huge hit. Um, we, we had a full class, uh, plus some, we, we filled up and then there were two extras that we, we kind of forced in um, because they wanted the class and, and it was a long story. But when we did the virtual version, I think there were 150 people in that class. Um, and it was, oh, wow. the virtual one was a year later. So there were there were a lot more things that I could you know bring to that class that I'd learned in that year. So That's um, tremendous. Yeah, if we, if we do another live con, I'll do that again. Well, that allows you to kind of set up your home studio a little bit too, in ways that you can't really do it in a in-person class as well. I mean, when you said a cooking class, that's that's exactly what I thought of. Yeah, and the uh, the weathering class, for example, um, there's some things that I, I do with with weathering with an airbrush that I can't do at a live con because I can't bring all that gear with me. You know, in an right. airplane, it's a little difficult. Um, so yeah, there was a whole lot of things that I was able to show because I was here in this room. I could just drag the airbrush over and demonstrate something. But yeah, so so each way, live or, or virtual, they, they have their pluses and minuses to both sides. Uh, I, I enjoy both. Well, that's tremendous. That's that's great. I'm, I'll I'll have to drop in and and watch a couple classes. It is tough. It's it's it's. Uh... It doesn't seem to matter what kind of convention it is. We're always running around trying to get other stuff done. But uh, I definitely do want to catch one of those. Someday I might paint again. We'll see. Yeah, I've been trying to keep an eye on chat. Um, uh, earlier, Rhonda mentioned something about I, I came down to help her out with a local event that she, she sponsors or she helps with, Save versus Hunger. That was, that was a good time. So there, it was always a paint and take, and uh, I did uh, like four classes down there, uh, which was, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Rhonda, but I think that might have been the first time classes were taught down there. We, we had a ball. Uh, they were mostly speed, speed painting classes, but it was a good time. Oh, cool. Was that at RondaCon or KevCon or a different con? It was Save versus Hunger. Yeah, they, Save uh, versus okay. Hunger. Okay, cool. They make a bunch of money for the food bank down in Knoxville, and uh, you know it's a good cause, good people. Uh, it's a great time. Yeah. 
Oh, that's cool. That's super cool. You get to do your hobby and and give back at the same time. So you're volunteering your time for yeah. something that you would be doing anyways. Yeah, it felt rewarding. Uh, you know, being down there around, you know, everybody there is there because they want to help a good cause. Um, so just mm-hmm. the whole atmosphere was, was great. And plus it was, you know, it was Rhonda and, and Aaron hanging out with them for a weekend is always great. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty cool. Uh, it's funny, I I had for decades tried to get my wife to paint miniatures. She really wouldn't do it, but she hung around with uh, Rhonda and Aaron for 15 minutes and she was cranking out the outliers and you know, griffins and everything else. Yeah, but she's super into it now. I see her posting yeah, stuff up on Facebook, up and it. she's churning you know, and burning she, those she, miniatures. She has learned more in the past two years than I've learned in the past forty. Um, oh. Just looking at, at where she's at now, she's uh, you know just just phenomenal how how much she's learned in a very short time. And you two are so great together. You make such a great couple and you just have the same kind of super energy level and inclusion level and positivity. It's just, it's great to see you two together. Um, well, we had five um, kids, so it was kind of a lot of uh, We had to be together. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to be trapped in. <laughs> Well, you no, didn't want to great. be singled out and circled and, and, and enslaved by the children. You had to stick together, you know? Right, my um, kids is a gang. It's not a family. Um, <laughs> They're gonna come beat you up. I get along really well. We've we've uh, I've been together for longer than some of my friends have been alive. So <laughs> cool. Can't imagine anything else. Now you have a um, on the bucket list of achievements that a lot of people. Um, strive for and work for. Um, you have a recent achievement with this last Bones uh, Kickstarter. Um, Ron asked you to uh, paint some stuff for the Reaper Mini- for Reaper miniatures as as official studio models, and you got your first box art credit. That was a complete shock. Um, yeah, yeah I, I didn't see that coming at all. Um, so, yeah, it was. Uh, gosh, what was it? Twenty nineteen, I think is is. He sent me an email just asking if I'd be interested in, in painting those for, you know, the, the studio or for those undead pirates. And, you know, as a, mm-hmm. a Bob Rudolph fan, how could I turn that down? Um, be the first one to paint those? Yeah, of course I want to do that. So, um, you know, that's how it started. It was just, you know, give him some, you know, painted skeletons, pirates, whatever. Um, I had no idea that they were going to be used on the box art. So I was sitting there watching Reaper Lab, and and he just kind of dropped it out there. I was I was totally shocked, completely. Oh, away he it. didn't even tell you. He didn't tell you that. It no, showed it to I you before. Know. He just dropped it on Reaper. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, was just kind That's of like, wrong. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's cool. Well, congratulations on that. I mean, that's just such a, you know, for so many people, it's just a bucket list kind of thing. So that's super awesome. And super awesome. And that's yeah, on the like, undead, yeah. pirate, undead Pirate box, is that right? Well, they're part of uh, Brownwind. Uh, the Brownwind Yeah, the Brownwind expansion. expansion. And I, I can't wait till... Uh, so I get my copy of them because I, you know, I sent those back to Ron, of course. But they're really cool sculpts, and uh, you know, the, the whole skeletal thing is is kind of right at my alley, anyway. So, so yeah. yeah, I'm kind of jealous. Did you of already? Them. Ordered? Oh yeah. That's, oh yeah. That's, that's so yeah. How hard was that? So it's still hard to this day. You paint something you really like, and it's going to be for you know, for instance, Reaper or whatever. Was it hard for you to send those guys away after you spent so much time with them, knowing what they were going to be your first commission work to let them go? Was that hard to well, do? Because I, I know you do a lot of individual commission work, but this is at a different level. Actually, no, because there was this whole aspect of, of like you said, it was a bucket list item. I, I couldn't wait for Ron to see mm-hmm. those. I wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, and, you know, I was cool. I was really hope, hopeful that he'd come back and say, those, those are awesome, you know, but at the same time, I was a little nervous of saying, man, these really suck. You need to start over. Um, but um, he seemed to really like them a lot. Uh, 
so from yeah the, the one standpoint they're really cool miniatures and and it was a little hard to not have them um but mm -hmm. By the other hand, you know, those are a Reaper now, and it's kind of like, like you said, it's a life goal for somebody at my level. It's remember goal remember to asking for an extra box just for you for the box art. I mean, if you want to have that on your shelf, yep. for sure. Totally. totally. Yeah, I plan to sign my own box. You know, keep it up there with that. Yeah. That'll be fantastic. Make sure <laughs> and bring a Sharpie to the next uh, Reaper con. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing about the Sharpie, um, 2018, uh, we were at, at Reaper Con. I was sitting, actually sitting next to Christine Van Patten, um, at, you know, there on the artist row, and this kid comes up. He's probably 17 or 18 years old, and, and he's got his Reaper program. And he said, hey, would you sign my program for me? And I said, man, you've got, really got the wrong guy. <laughs> I don't know who you're looking for, but it's not me. And he's like, no, no, it's you. And well, it turned to find out he, he had taken one of my classes the year before that. And, so that was the one autograph I'd ever given. And, uh, you know, yeah. that was a really cool moment. You know, I was like, you, you should probably wait until some of the real artists get back, but I'll sign it. <laughs> uh, he was just, That's he was just wanting to get deal, a copy though. of your signature to, to steal your identity. Yeah. <laughs> Make no, sure that's, that there's that's no credit cards deal. opened up in your name. Yeah. You forget, especially, especially with a lot of the kids, they, they really are impressed. Uh, when they take your class and uh, I mean, it kind of goes back a little bit to what we were talking about earlier I think some of my best questions in class have come from kids because once they get over their initial shyness uh, they'll pretty much ask you anything fairly bluntly you know like uh, why did you mess up that hand or, or why did you you know why did you make the sign yeah. of the face crooked <laughs> so then you have to come up with an answer but they really do. Uh, it's it's surprising. I think when you're on your side of the table, it's surprising how much people uh, are interested in what you're doing. Oh yeah. You, um, I mean, well, I've never really considered myself, you know, a pro artist or anything like that. So when I when I go down to ReaperCon and I I still get you know goosebumps when I see you know a nameplate with my name on it uh, you know among some of the greatest artists in the world in my opinion um, so like the last one uh, 2019 I sit next to Tish Walter and um, she's amazing I'm a huge fan of hers and yeah. just you know oh, yeah. sitting in proximity of her, I feel like I leveled up uh, but yeah that's kind of the thing there's so many people walking around there at different skill levels and I think that might be some of the value I bring is it but I am somewhere in between, uh, you know, I, I, I still can see it from the perspective of, Hey, I just want to fill my game table up. Uh, and I, at the same time, you know, I, I know what it's like to, to compete. I know what judges are kind of looking for. So I may not be able to do what they're asking, but I might be able to tell them you know, how to do it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or or even or even someone that that might have a little more expertise in that area, or yeah, it's it's neat and it's uh, it's great because you're still in that approachable space, you know that that uh, Michael's left a long time ago. Um, oh yeah, when you get to his level, it's just insane. Um, you got to schedule an appointment. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I actually, totally. I mean, come on. Yeah, I only mean, I got yeah. so much energy here. Yes, I know. I waited in line two hours to get an <laughs> autograph from him at the last Reaper Con, and someone just came uh, out just and said, "Oh, he's tired. It. He has to take a nap. He has to have a nap." And then oh. candy bar. I'm a little sore from that bus. That bus just creamed me right there. Just turned yeah, all over my ass. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah Bryce so rubbing up the bus. Lines. You know, what? Um, right along those lines. You know, we met. Mm. Uh, 2016 or 17 at the gun and knife show um kind of you know talked for a few hours here and there through the weekend mm -hmm. you know the the following year you had uh you had the back surgery thing going on so mm -hmm. you know here i was helping mm -hmm. with you know his plates and you know putting a bib on him and, and yeah, things like you that. really helped me a ton i was a little invalid uh, yeah yeah and then you know 
going into 2019, I, I made sure that his, his area was prepped, that there were, you know, purple M&Ms waiting for him, just like he requested. And then my wife comes yeah. in, who's never been to Rapercon Re- at all. Um, and I said, hey, Mickey, this is the, the guy that I was talking about, you know, the Honorable Michael Proctor. Um, and he says, hey, do you want one of these? And I'm still jealous about that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gave her a, a, a pro mini um, that I can't get. So, <laughs> so she, oh, well, I owe you one, her. and <laughs> she's supposed to paint that. I wanted to paint you know, she that. She just rubs it in my face. And she has it. I don't know that she is ready to paint it until you know. Every time we paint together, she'll kind of put that in between us to let us know. You know, let me know where I stand. Well, show stands. show that up on show that up on the screen again. <laughs> because that cr- clever crow, Jason, you recognize that, don't you? Yeah. The, I Jason think so. Weeby sculpted that. Yeah, Jason Weeby sculpted that for me, um, and I have a few cast up, and I'll bring them to shows and stuff, and hand them out if I don't know. He, he you know, nice to bring out. Yeah, yeah, make a schedule appointment. Probably have a mold somewhere. Yeah. She's downstairs right now, and I got this door locked so that you know my grandson will come in. Maybe I could go ahead and paint this before she gets up here. There you go. Well, <laughs> she's, she's, she's talking about it in chat, so I, I think you've kind of blown the surprise. And then I'll say, Michael said he was going to send you another one. I don't, I don't know what happened to that. Yeah. It, well, it I'll send, on I'll send you all one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll have I your, your address. I your address all. Yeah. 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 Well. Stay, yeah. Stay I on get the line. We'll, we'll, we'll get our assistant to get your address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, she's uh, that was kind of a big deal to her though. So yeah, she really appreciated it. But uh, yeah, the, the so cool thing was. Favorite? Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say the cool thing was is that here, I, you know, I had talked about ReaperCon uh, for years. Um, I would go by myself. Because she she really wasn't, you know, very much into miniature painting at all. Um, she would she would tell me I did okay on things from time to time, but she didn't really care, you know. Again, until she met Rhonda and and Aaron, and then she was all about painting. So she went with me that that last year, 2019, and she saw for herself first time just how awesome it was. I mean, everybody being so approachable and and it's such a family feel to it. It's it really is the best con that we go to. Um, and we go to quite a few, um, but yeah, she's, she's hooked too. And then, you know, as fate would have it, she gets hooked and then 2020 occurs. So. Oh, I know. Yep. That's well, rough. maybe, hopefully, hopefully there will be a Reaper Con in 2021. If it all works out and everything, all the dominoes fall where they should, hopefully. But if not, we'll figure it out and we'll do it in. Do it again some other time, right? There's got to be one in the next couple of years for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I really hope so, but I have to say, you know, kudos to Reaper for figuring out the virtual thing because the virtual events, I mean, they they really had that feel to them. It felt very Reaper Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, they did a great job. They did a fantastic job on that. Um, I was going to ask... What's your new uh, favorite technique? What What are you doing now, uh, as far as your painting? What What's caught your eye for for adding to your toolbox this year? Well, a couple That's of things. Question, um, here lately, I have started experimenting with oil paints, um, which that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but it's a whole different hobby. It's, it's it doesn't really transfer to what I know, you know, as far as the acrylic paints go. Yeah. So, so that whole kind of book bag full of skills of, of oil painting, I'm, I'm still learning. Um, so that in itself is an excitement because it's something new. Uh, but I'm not that good at it yet. Uh, but also, like some of the techniques for the, the classes that I'm going to be teaching here in a few weeks, um, I've been working on, you know, how to make spider webs and things like that. Uh, so some of these classic horror elements, and I don't want to give, I don't want to give too much away from it, but uh, 
you know, just some of the new techniques that I'm trying of, you know, various people's videos that I, I'm catching. Um, learning anything new is exciting to me. So that, that's kind of where I'm at this week. Uh, but who knows what next week's mm -hmm. on. You know, I, I try to learn something as I go all the time. Yeah, it's always a snapshot. I was just curious. I know that you're ramping up to teach your classes. I've been seeing some of the things you've been posting, so I've been kind of guessing at what you're trying to refine at the moment. So I'll be anxious to see how you do those spider webs. Yeah, it's actually, um, I'm gonna, like most of my classes, I like to show two or three different ways to do the same thing. Um, because my, I know for myself, um, there are some techniques that are just difficult for me. Yeah. So if I know a different way, I might be able to try that that second way and it really clicks. So when I teach, I, I try to say, well, here's two or three different ways to do this effect. And, you know, you don't, you don't really need to know both of them, know what works for you and what you enjoy. Right, right. And, and for me, it's all about how do you have fun in the hobby? Um, as opposed to you have to do it this way. This, this is the only way it works. Well, that's, that's never true. Um, so yeah, if I can offer somebody, one tool to fit in the toolbox and I feel like I've succeeded. How do you get the spiders to go where you want them to go? Do they follow a laser pointer like a cat? Well, actually it takes, <laughs> it takes weeks of training. You have to, you have to consistently yeah. feed them, you know, various flies and moths and things. And that's difficult in the winter time. Uh, but once you, you gain your a, trust. Right, right. Do you use a clicker or anything? You know, actually I found them. that if you, if you, if you try the clicking, um, Certain spiders that, that uh, translates into a mating call, and it's not a pretty situation. Um, uh, so you yeah, want to avoid probably, a different probably not kid friendly. Well, it's, it's a whole different class, but you know there yeah. is some yeah. value in that. <laughs> well, I can see quite a bit of overlap actually between some of the stuff you're going to teach and and uh, uh, some of Michael's basing techniques. That'll be an interesting synthesis if you guys ever team up on something. Yeah, we should team up that, on something. That would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah. You know, I've always been a fan of, of Michael's basing techniques, and, and I've tried to emulate some of that. Um, and, I, you know, I'm not there. I don't, I don't succeed usually, but, uh, like, one of the ones he did, uh, actually, the Dark Sword Albert. Go ahead. Um, yeah. hmm. um, that one, uh, I was fascinated by it, so I, I stole a lot of ideas from that. <laughs> Hey, that's what it's all about. But you are selling yourself short. You did a really, really cool. I thought it was really original. Mo the Moby Dick entry that you did in the last oh, yeah. live. For yeah, virtual that class. was I mean, wonderful. That was awesome. That was really good. You had the book. You had the whale. It was really cool. It was really well done. Too. So kudos to you. For you know, that. I was just that talking was really about nice a few weeks ago with our, our local um, painting club. We were kind of mm -hmm. talking about, you know, the, the Reaper Challenge League, they've got the page rama thing. So I, I was talking about the Moby Dick entry. And I've actually mm -hmm. thought about redoing that because that was before I learned all the things about water effects and things like that. So I had no idea how to do that, really. Um, and if I could go back and, and do the water effects right, it, it would have probably uh, scored a little higher. But that was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed that project a lot. It, it did have kind of a wow factor. Every and if you do that, would you just, you wouldn't just redo the existing piece. You would start from scratch and do a whole new piece or would you redo? Uh, I'd start all the way over. Um, I learned a oh. whole lot while I was doing that. Um, I mean, just the, you know, that was the actual book uh, that I cut out and, you know, created these, these wells for, you know, the sculpted well and, and the ship and, and all the, mm -hmm. all the miniatures that were in that were actually Reaper miniatures. Um, but some of them were, like one was a, originally a, a pirate captain that was sitting on a chest. Um, so I painstakingly mm -hmm. removed the chest. Well, those were mm -hmm. all metal miniatures. I've got a whole, you know, mm -hmm. closet full of bones back here that I can, I can really go crazy with that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Well, especially we got more pirates and critters coming in Bones 5 here in a few months, as long as the, the ships make it. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Yeah. Um, I, went, I went pretty big with uh, Bones 5. <laughs> I think a yeah, lot so of Yeah, so what are you in for? Think. What's your total dollar amount that you were in for for this bone, this last bone? My wife's watching. I'm not saying. 
blood. <laughs> You're a smart man. You're a smart man. So she doesn't know. We will say that. Oh, well, good, good, good. Oh, that's but good. yeah, it's, it's it's funny when Bond Spy when they first, uh, you know, I I have the the rest of them, you know, one through four, um, in varying uh -huh. states of completion, um, as well as a bunch of other Kickstarters. Not to mention the whole wall of things that I've gotten from various reaper cons and things that I went to. Um, mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong. I paint a lot. Uh, I paint hundreds of miniatures every year, but there's still a whole, I mean, room full of backlog. So when they announced bones five, I was telling everybody, well, you know, it's going to be cool. It's going to be great. You know, but all my favorite sculptors are involved in this. So yeah, of course the miniatures are going to be great, but I don't really think I need any. And then I saw them. <laughs> so, you know, I, I find myself saying, well, I can't not have that. I've, I've got to have that piece. Uh, well, it's kind especially of a form of, uh, kind of a form of immortality, you know, as long as you got another miniature left mm -hmm. to paint, you got to paint it. So that'll just keep you going. You know, you should never paint <laughs> yeah. your very last miniature. I've heard and Rhonda, uh, at, at, Rhonda, you're on, and I know you're listening. Did you hear that he paints over 100 miniatures a year? I'm just saying, over a hundred miniatures a year, you well, complete. That's there's, amazing. There's We're lucky if we do like twelve. <laughs> yeah. So last year, I actually counted uh, for 2020. Mm -hmm. I had a spreadsheet because I had uh, you know a whole game system that has hundreds of minis with it that I was trying to keep track of what what needed to be painted by when, um, mm -hmm. and that morphed into me tracking every single miniature that I painted and, and 2020, no exaggeration. The total was 409. Now wow. that includes, that includes Maldacar, Caladrax and Argent. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my friends says those still only count as one a piece. That's true. It's only count as one. <laughs> Can't count that multiple. So yeah, Maldacar maybe with the heads, but yeah. Obviously, it's not a typical year. We were on a lot of it, so uh, I'd say typical is about two hundred mm -hmm. a year. Uh, wow! Well, many yeah, like that was... certainly count for more than one. <laughs> I would argue yeah. that that Malachi yeah. is at least six. one for each head and one for I'd the body. Say, I'd say at least that many. Bobby Jackson, your min wax technique does not count as painting a miniature i'm just putting it out there right now it doesn't count whatever volume of miniatures you dump in the min wax it does not count david's at least he's <laughs> painting with colors on the thing and not dunking them no. in min wax and ruining a, a, a good miniature see that's the that's the exact kind of elitism that we had that meeting about with hr michael well i i know <laughs> i know mm. And I got Miko in here with me because Michelle is off doing stuff today, so I'm babysitting, and she is uh, wants a little attention. You know, for for years I carried around a bottle of Metal Green just in case I ran into Bobby Jackson. Um, yeah, because yeah. he'll be very happy to hear that. Well, I called it the Bobby Jackson Green uh, Tip um, because it was funny. I would always go to places, and he had either just been there, or he was there the year before. Um, mm. So finally, one of the Reaper cons, I walked up to him and I said that he looked at me like it was crazy. But then when I showed him I had metal green with me, we were we were you know you know hit it right off. <laughs> I always keep that in my pocket, you know, just in case you never know if you're going to need some. Yeah, whenever you're going to have a Bobby <laughs> right. Jackson sighting, and he'll need to survive off the metal green that you have, and he'll suck it from you. But yeah, this show here, I've, hey. I've learned something now. I've got to keep some men wax with me too. I mean, he might yeah. want to sit down and paint. Oh. You could, you could hide little road. bottles all around Bobby's hometown there and just let yeah, him discover them like Easter eggs. There's, this is for Bobby. You know, I do use my If I would have talked to Bobby before 2020, I could have probably hit 800 with the Minwax. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Now, you yeah. mix Minwax <laughs> right into that meadow green, don't you? I'm not quite Who, that me? level. Yeah. Oh. Doesn't a minwax go right Never. in the meadow green before you show it? Uh, I don't know anything about minwax. 
I refuse uh, even to acknowledge it. Yeah. Wow, man. Lin Wex is dead know, to me. You're gonna get, you're gonna get in trouble, man. Head office is gonna be down on you. <laughs> I use Min Wax when I stain the floors and and, um, but not for like painting miniatures, fine quality sculpted miniatures. It's almost an insult on the whole process to just slap Min Wax on. Oh, oh I see. You're trying to recruit me into your cause. I see. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, you've spent all that time sculpting it and everything, and you just want somebody just to, like Bobby Jackson, just to slap some meadow green on it and dunk it in the minwax? That's true. I hadn't thought of it that way. You've just yeah, about got just, me off I'm the looking out for. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. out for your livelihood more than anything about the whole minwax yeah. argument. I don't know why Bobby's well, I, going down that road. Might have to change my tune. Yeah, that could be yeah, a whole separate category. Yeah. It must be open next time. Bobby no, gave Rhonda I, some min wax. Bobby gave <laughs> Rhonda some min wax, and it dried up before she could use it. Oh, there I will don't never know. be a min wax category at the painting competition. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Boy, does that give me an idea. <laughs> I like Bob, Bug Lip says I like to think of Minwax as traditional art. Hmm. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. It's just wall art. I don't art. know where I'd go with that. Yeah, <laughs> Frank. By, by by the foot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 not doing I'm not doing the Minwax. I'm open to all new techniques, um, but no Minwax. And it it's not anything really against the Minwax or against the product or what the results it'll achieve. It's mainly against Bobby. Since Bobby yeah. suggested it, I'm dead set against it. Um, well, you know, I just, just like, right before the show, I actually just signed them as a sponsor. So we might want to reevaluate. <laughs> oh, Minwax or Bobby? Minwax. Minwax. I don't oh, think Bobby well, would. Oh, shit. I just ruined that sponsor. That was our first sponsor. Yeah. Well, I think we can get you out of it since it became a personal attack on Bobby instead of attack on the product. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, no, I used Minwax when I uh, put the, when I redid the stairs and put new stairs in and put new wood floors in, on the landing. I used Minwax products for the staining and the clear coating, and they worked wonderful. I may still have some Minwax and you did um, that clear coat because they enhanced over. the look and protected the natural grain of the wood. Yes, of the wood. Yes. Okay. But to so just shellac so, a miniature, um, yeah. There's so probably a good way of putting it on a miniature, the right way. It's just Bobby doesn't do it. So when we introduce those wooden miniatures next year, <laughs> Derek. Yeah. The minwax would be a good thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. So just yeah. yeah. Mm. See, rings is with me. See, you know, I'm so how even can I be afraid wrong? now to ask David about his views on win uh, min min wax because you're going to just tromp all over. No, he might no, be. no, no, no. Because this is Dave's view. It's not Bobby talking about min wax. That's really what it comes down to oh, is Bobby's I, that's opinion. That's right. I keep forgetting. It's a personal thing. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a personal thing between Bobby and I about the min wax. I now Man. take it as a personal challenge to include Minwax in both of my classes for RBE. You should. I have to Let's keep picking that. <laughs> Let's keep picking that scab. Oh, yeah. Oh. What Bobby did do, he says in the chat, he did do a Minwax class at um, this last ReaperCon that we had in person, 2019. Um, his his Padawans would would have dominated the competition. <laughs> Except oh, for right. COVID. COVID knocked yeah. him out last year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the smelling of the Minwax knocked him out last time. Well, there may not be a category for Minwax, but I'm pretty sure it showed up in some ReaperCon entries. Yeah. <laughs> and Derek judged those. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm saying. If we, if we started that as a category all to its own, Bobby could judge those. I mean, who, who else would be better? He clearly is the answer. I, I'm gonna, David. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you off. <laughs> I'm gonna delete you from the feed right now. We are not having a minwax category, um, and Bobby's getting nowhere near judging ever 
anything. So no, it's not happening. I don't. Bo Bobby's consistency is 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 uh, questionable. So Dave, yeah. what's your favorite genre of miniatures to paint? <laughs> Definitely fantasy. Um, we play a lot of D and D, okay. um, and yeah, when it comes right down to it, I, I'm a gamer. Um, so yeah, I, I like to put all some miniatures on the table, and um, you know they need to at least be at a level of, of paint that I'm not embarrassed and my players make fun of me. Um, but yeah, definitely the fantasy figures. Um, now, oddly enough, uh, around April, we're going to start a pirate campaign for whatever reason. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Cool. But, you know, looking at like this Rutarki here, um, we have played a couple of sci-fi type games. And, and just the fact that this miniature exists makes me want to play some sci-fi type games. Uh, so yeah, I might have to start looking. I would say the Rutarki probably has a little element of fantasy to it, though. <laughs> it does, and that's, that's probably why I kind of lean towards that faction. I mean, it has nothing to do with the fact that they're directly opposed to John's faction, uh, regardless of what he may uh, say. But hmm. yeah, the the Reaper virtual, you know, the, what, what do they call it? The Reaper Live in September that we did. Um, John and I oh, were, just ReaperCon. Yeah, ReaperCon. We, we were really talking yeah. a lot of smack back and forth about our factions. So I had to find out what mm -hmm. his faction was for RBE before I could declare mine. And, and oddly enough, oh. I'm in the faction that pretty much is directly opposed to his. So. Cool. It just well, there's nothing that, drives a, nothing that drives a good competition as much as uh, Vendetta. I mean, I think <laughs> that's mm -hmm. great. We like to encourage that kind of thing. <laughs> so when you game, do you uh, do you go all out? Do you put a lot of terrain out? Or do you concentrate mostly on miniatures and maps? Or what's your what's your gaming like? So do you I feel, wait, before you answer that, before you answer that, do you go full Frank? That's what it is when you throw all the terrain out. If you ever watch Reaper Aaron. Right. Because re he goes full, full Frank, it is a super high bar. But so how 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 oh, what's Frank, your Frank you get, scale? Full Frank, yeah. you get You're music, really... you get mood music and snowstorms as well. So oh, the last oh, one, there was snowflakes falling on the map. But, uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm not yeah. I'm not anywhere close to full on Frank. Um, but then again, I'm not really a, a paper map on the table either. I've, I've got some 3D terrain that we'll throw out there for. You know some encounters um and we don't really uh show every hallway and every you know every door but the main sure. encounters i usually spend some time and kind of craft my own stuff out of you know styrofoam and cardboard um but yeah my players are really spoiled so if, if there's a miniature on the table they're assuming that that's what their character sees um and if i try to say well that bugbear is actually an orc they're gonna let me have it they're they're going to continue to call that a bugbear versus an orc. Um, so yeah, I have to have, if, you know, if, if that elf showed up in the last game session, you know, I'm reusing that miniature. They're going to call it out. They're going to say, is that the same guy that we saw on the dock or are you just reusing that miniature? Well, uh, from, from deep in my sculptor's heart, I have to thank your players. Hmm. Yeah, they, they really, uh, they really enjoy it. Um, and the fact that um, some of the larger ones, you know, with the bones uh, figures, just the fact that those are in the game room um, puts an element of fear into our game because they, they know at any point Maldicar could hit the table. Um, so, yeah, I've got a few others that I've been working on. Uh, this one here, um, it's in the really, really early stages. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. That's one that uh, I'm going to be bringing in real yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yep. So, yeah, I've been working spot, on that. Jason. You did such a good job on uh, that. Thanks. Yeah, I've got a whole story that I'm, I'm putting together just for that. I, I love that sculpt. Um, so do people stock your social media accounts to find out what they're going to have to face on the table the next week? <laughs> well, no, not really, because... Usually if I post something, it may be a while um, before I use it. Like uh, just a few weeks ago, I, 
I picked uh, Goramal up there that I'd painted. And that's uh -huh. setting down in the game room now. And, you know, at some point, I'll grab that off the shelf and, and throw it out there on them. But, but it'll, it'll be a while. I want them to kind of forget that I've got it, you know, sitting there. You know, Usually what I paint is not for the next game session. It's for something three or four months down the road. Well, well I'm sure I'm... But now, see, Gorma, I would think Meadow Green and Minwax, it almost fits, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's a little hard to get that yellow and purple thingy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can do it if you're, you know, at Bobby Jackson's level, but I, I'm not there. I can't get purple out of Meadow Green. I did uh, need to experiment with you. You can't go. I'm sure. You said you couldn't go down to that level. Is that what you said? I didn't hear it right. You went. You have to. You have to go down to his level. I haven't quite figured out the ratio of minwax to pit with metal green <laughs> to get a good purple. Um, but I'm uh, sure it can be done. All right. He'll he, let Bobby put up the math for you. <laughs> well, that Gormaw is a wonderful miniature as well. I would not want to see that on the table in front of me. If I were no playing. Frank, don't get any ideas. <laughs> yep. Speaking yeah, of D and D, uh... and since Frank is on, um, and Frank went full on Frank on this last episode of uh, Reaper Errant, which is it just happened last Friday, so we won't be on this Friday, but we're going to be on the next Friday, um, where Frank runs this great D and D game for us, and. Uh, if you haven't watched any of them, maybe you missed last Friday's episode. It's good to watch the whole thing. There was a lot of action happening. I think the murder hobos really came together as a unit. But if you can only catch one part, um, catch the end because there's a naked lubed up gnome and there's adventures of a naked noob lubed up gnome um, that is very comical and added a nice little ending. It's at the very end. So yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. There's another case journal. I, Justin, is there a way you can link Kay's journal for those folks that haven't watched Reaper Errant? Uh, do you know, yeah. Is, do you have that link anymore? I don't have it don't straight know. up. But you let me see are... if I can find it. Okay, cool. Um, but anyways, oh. and it's just fun. And I know, David, you love to, to run D&D &D games and stuff. Have you been doing face-to-face D&D? &D, are you doing it more virtual, Zoom kind of D&D? &D, or how have you been doing it? Uh, well, mostly face to face, but I have to say, um, okay. a lot of my players are either uh, family or pretty close to it. Uh, sure. We have mm -hmm. taken some precautions. Um, actually, initially, when you know the, the COVID was just coming around, we we kind of stopped gaming for a few months and just debated it. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're very careful about you know if if like let's say for example, I've been exposed to somebody. Um, that may have it, then I may cancel the game session or, or we might do it online or whatever. But um, most of us are around each other so much that, you know, we're, we're basically family or we're actually family. So I'm, I'm kind of lucky in that yeah, regard. I, I, think that's a realistic, I think that's a realistic, I think that's a realistic approach. I mean, that, that, I think that makes a lot of sense. Hey, you had mentioned, we had talked just very briefly on Facebook about a gaming store that's near and dear to your heart that had some bad things happen to it. I was wondering if you wanted to elaborate on that and maybe we could tell people where to go to help them out. Yeah, actually, um, I will. Um, so very long story short, there were a handful of us uh, that, that live here in the, the immediate area, uh, you know, within five or 10 minutes of each other that the only time we would see each other is when we went to ReaperCon. So we were at ReaperCon one year and we, we decided we need to find a game store in Louisville um, where we can set together, you know, a couple times a month and, and paint together. And that, that game store that we, we decided upon was, it's called Cardinal Gaming. Um, they were, you know, really open to the idea. They provided us a space and, and our little group of, five or six people quickly grew into, you know, a dozen or, or as many as 20 um, on some nights. Uh, and, you know, pre-COVID, uh, every Thursday night, we would meet there at the game store and, and 
you know, we'd buy some stuff from them maybe, but we'd sit there for, you know, three or four, maybe five hours and paint together. Well, COVID hit, you know, small businesses around the country are, are feeling the pain. Um, but this game store has continued to try to provide some of the service. Now, we can't meet there in person, um, but we could still go there and do our shopping, you know, get our paints, our minis, or our gaming supplies, whatever it would be. Well, they've had a rash of robberies. Um, they've been broken into uh, three or four times in the last couple of months and, and even armed rob, you know, robbed at gunpoint uh, twice in the last few months. Um, and it's really just disheartening because those guys at the, the game store, it's just two guys that started a business, you know, fresh out of college. They're great guys, and I really hate to see that happen to them. And, you know, now we're, we're kind of, you know, concerned, you know, are they going to be able to survive this? I mean, it's a hard hit to a game store. They don't have a lot of profit margin as it is. And then somebody comes in there and takes, you know, what they've made that day. That's, that's, that's a big hit. And I know the owner, uh, the owners are both pretty upset about it. Um, but yeah, we, we've been trying to just let them know that we care. Um, and, you know, obviously we can't go do anything against these, these burglars that are coming in, you know, we're not sure. Enforced or sure. Anything. We can support what well, we can. Yeah, I saw that they did mail order and that they have a lot of Reaper miniatures. So I put a little link in the chat if anybody was uh, feeling like they needed to, to get something from an actual game store. I think that'd be a good place to do it maybe next week. So, Yeah, wow. and uh, that's cool. That's really awesome. I, I know that they'll appreciate that um, because, yeah, they at this point, they don't know if they're going to be able to open back up because. You know they don't they don't want to subject their customers to that kind of you know environment and yeah you know, i wish them the best but, but yeah that, that certainly help if somebody can place you know an order online it, i'm sure they appreciate that yeah that's a rough thing i used yeah. to be part of a couple different game stores and you know a family develops around it you get regular customers and the whole thing and uh first of all having covid it kind of get to your business like that and then to be uh to be burgled to have people actually break in and stuff is is really terrible i can't imagine i can't imagine that's rough on the small businessmen for sure oh yeah yeah, yeah they're, they're just such great guys i mean uh, really hate to hear that you know they, they've bent over backwards for our little paint club and and now i kind of feel like it's it's our turn to to help them out a little bit all right. Well, like I said, anybody that that uh, go go peruse their website, see maybe there's something you need. Yeah, that's awesome. Good job, David. Good job. Yep. I appreciate you bringing that up, Jason. Now? What's your? You're welcome. Yeah, what are you working on now? What's your big project that your your big miniature, your you know, the little one that you're really going to put yourself into and your heart into? Is there anything you have on your table? Doesn't well, actually right now. Anything. Right now, it's just getting things ready for the classes. Um, you know, just okay. just kind of going over things. Um, like I've been working on this piece a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well. Um, just a little gore piece. <laughs> stuff, oh, cool. Things like that. cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Making little example pieces. Um, again, you know, I like to show people kind of a variety of things. So um, I've got some. Some various orcs and things that I'm going to put some some rust on and, and such for the, mm -hmm. the weathering class. But yeah, that's that's my main goal is just to be ready for RVE. Now, on the side note, um, I am participating in the Reaper Challenge League um, more as a participation thing um, with our local paint club. So I've got I've got probably 20 miniatures laying here that are various stages for, for that. Um, you know, we haven't talked about that very much on this show. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the Reaper Challenge? So, all right, so at the, at the high level, Reaper Challenge League is, is just a way to get people engaged in painting. You know, the, the spirit of, um, there are different categories. So one of them is uh, the Shelf of Shame, for example. You get so many points for, for something like, I've got a whole shelf here that literally there are 60 miniatures that I have painted. So for that category, it's one of those. I just grab one of them off and I finally finish it. Um, mine for January was Sir Four Scale. I've had that setting mm. up here in Prior for a good five years. And 
I finally said, okay, I need to, to paint this. Um, but then there's other categories. There's uh, like um, a seasonal category. So one, one of the holidays of the quarter, uh, I painted one that was for Mardi Gras. I did the Bourbon Street Sophie for that. And you, you collect these points. And at the end of the quarter, there's a drawing um, for some kind of prizes. And I, I don't really know if it's gift cards or what, but how many ever points you've made, those equate to like raffle entries in this drawing. Mm. But for me, it's just been a way to start working through the backlog. I find something that fits that category and, you know, crank it out and I, I throw it on their uh, Discord and, and get my points and, and uh, kind of move on to the next piece. It's it's really been motivating um, to, to start, I don't know, channeling through some of these, these pieces that I haven't touched in, in ages. It doesn't have to be something that you've had for a hundred years because there is the category of new release. So it's something that you mm -hmm. get something that's just come out that month and paint. And that's on the Discord, right? That's its own channel on the Discord, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, they've got it's on the Reaper Discord. There's a I don't know a couple of channels. There's submissions and discussions, and, and there's a I don't know four four different channels there that. Uh, that kind of tell you the rules and, and how to submit. Well, that'd be that'd be a great resource if you just are stuck. Maybe need some ideas. Pull them well, off yourself. Actually, get busy. I've actually seen that it's pulling people together, right? So we went through basically yeah. a year where we can't really socialize, and now through the Discord, it's like, hey, one of the categories is trio. Well. I want to paint this figure and you find two other people that's got the same figure and the three of you paint it and you submit together. So it's, it's more than just a, a way to earn points and a way to get free stuff. It's, it's really a way to keep the community kind of engaged with each other. Hear that Bobby? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, uh, David, I wanted to ask you a question. I've asked a lot of the artists that, as they've come on the show, um, how do you, how do you personally deal? Because you have such a great positive attitude. You're you are a churner and burner. You're always doing something else. You're always painting on to the next miniature painting. Um, do you ever hit that kind of painter's block or, or get discouraged in yourself or anything? And then what do you do if that happens? How do you work through those kind of um, blocks, mental blocks, your mind playing tricks with you, those kind of things? So. I really don't ever hit a point of discouragement um, because, yeah, for me, it is there is kind of a joy in this. Um, but there are some times where I'll hit I'll hit an area of um, well, for me, it's I'll hit an area where something is kind of done enough, right? So let's say I'm making a competition piece, and I know I can do mm -hmm. something better, um, but I'll hit this point of where it no longer has much interest for me, right? I've, I've painted on this thing. I've done as best I can do on the blends, but then there's, you know, one or two little details that I know I could do better. So really what I try to do is, is just mix it up. If I'm, if I'm painting something, I've been working on it all week long on this one piece and it's frustrating me because I can't get, uh, you know, I can't get the buckles to look clean enough or something like that. I'll put that to the side and jump on something else and I'll speed paint say a, an army of 12 miniatures for a game and knock those out in mm -hmm. a day because that's a whole different skill set. And then while I'm doing that, it may hit me. Okay, this is what I need to do. I need to grab my blue liner and I can go around that belt buckle first and then hit it. With blue the liner. Yeah. So if I start thinking about something else, it's kind of like if you're trying to remember something and if you're sitting mm -hmm. there trying to think of uh, the name was right there on the tip of my tongue. If you start thinking about a different topic, usually that name will pop right into your head. So it's the same thing with these yeah. techniques. If I get frustrated, I'll just start doing something else. And then it'll usually come to me, yeah. oh, this is what they said to do for non-metallic metal, uh -huh. or this is what they said to do for freehand or, or whatever. Cool. That's 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 interesting, and I, I've always appreciated your. You always have a smile on your face, and you always have this great positive attitude. You, you walk, you go to next time you go to Repercon, anybody, and you're walking around the floor, and you see Lord Dave. He's never not smiling. He's never not joking around, and that's that's such a great vibe. It's such a great um, addition to the whole con. Um, 
because I'm always pissed off. Um, and I have Jason's just storming around all the time. Um, so yeah, I, no? I'm, I'm really generally in a bad mood. Yeah. Yeah, generally. Yeah. Well, Usually guess, you have a hangover. Why they hit me on that yeah. first row last time is because then I could kind of yeah. screen people as they were coming in and, and warn them about the second row where you guys were sitting. Yeah, we appreciate how well, you diverted a lot of them over to Tish rather than sending them down the Dragon Small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just trying to. Yeah, uh, was that, oh, you, pa painting big is. Go ahead. Say that again, David. I was just directing people away from that side of the, the artist road, just saying, "Hey, did you did you see that event over there? Did you there see you those go. video yeah. games over yeah. there? Look over there. Look Perfect. over there. Yeah, yeah. That exactly. was the best way. That was the best way. So thank you for that. Is that right? Uh, like totally. <laughs> now that nice smile uh, takes on a whole different context when you see it in a hearse. Mm. <laughs> Glad uh, you went I was, there. I, I didn't know it was going to come get there. Good job, Jason. Yeah. 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 Because uh, tell us a little bit about your car. Okay, very long story short. First of all, I am the second owner. Um, I bought it from a funeral home. Uh, it's a 92 Cadillac Fleetwood. Um, so yeah, it had been in service for 26 years uh, at a privately owned family funeral home in South Carolina. They got bought by a larger corporation and that corporation said that the old hearse didn't fit their image. So they sold it to me. So the wife and I went down there. Oh yeah, yeah. At the time, it really did. Um, so I was at the time doing uh, artwork, kind of full time at, at art shows, and not just miniature, but also like two D canvases and, and things like that. And I needed a way to get to and from art shows. And some of the canvases that I was doing was, you know, four feet long, three feet high canvases, and they just wouldn't fit and in the minivan or, or um, in the SUV or whatever. So I needed a larger vehicle anyway. And, uh, you know, I found this, actually my wife found the hers um, and she, she showed it to me and asked me if what I thought about it. And I said, well, let's go. <laughs> so I went down and bought the, the hers and, and we test drove it. Um, uh, after I bought it, we, we jumped inside and drove it straight from the funeral home all the way to Louisville, and it was it was about six hours to get there, but it took uh, the hearse about eight hours to get back. Um, but yeah, uh, hearse going through the <laughs> mountains of Kentucky. Was... Actually, my wife was following behind me in the SUV, and oh, I you know, thought we were thought maybe you could get some police to drive with you. <laughs> Motorcycle cops, I think, would have been cool. Really, the, the cool thing was every rest area that we stopped at on the way back. Everybody wanted to take pictures with it. Um, it, it was hilarious. Um, so, uh, you know, we were coming back through those mountains. When you, when you come from South Carolina to Kentucky, you've got to go through the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, I, I gained a whole new respect for, um, you know, cars that are top heavy because the hearse at 6,000 pounds, when I got to the top of those hills, I would be crawling along at maybe 40 miles an hour. And then going down the hill on the other side, it would it would pretty much hit terminal velocity before I hit the bottom of the hill, um, which gets pretty scary when you're in a hurry, you know, and you're going, you know, 100 miles an hour. Uh, but if well, you slow down, you're not going to make it. <laughs> that's why they don't let too many living people ride in those, I think. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, it's kind of my daily car. Um, I don't do the art shows anymore. I went back to work in an office. Um, back into project management, but, uh, you know, usually if I, when I drive it to work, everybody's got something to say about it. And, it, you know, I guess when we go to the grocery store, they've always got comments. Um, I do like to pull up next to people the, red light. Do you have a name? Like, See, does the hearse have a name? It does. Does um, the hearse have a name? <laughs> I was watching chat. I was asking what the name was. Yeah, Lucille is the name of the hearse. She's uh Oh, okay. Got it. She's uh, you know, kind of a family member now. And I don't drive her a whole lot in the wintertime, uh, for obvious reasons. If it's if it's snowy or icy, it's just the wrong vehicle to be in. Uh, hmm. so yeah, I've seen a hearse spin three sixty in the neighborhood at twenty miles an hour. It's just something that the neighbors don't like to see a whole lot of. Hmm. <laughs> 
I imagine that would be shocking. <laughs> so yeah, Rhonda just mentioned the grocery store. So yeah, we, we have taken it multiple times to, you know, the grocery. And uh, every time there's somebody that gives me some weird looks. Um, and, you know, for, for one, on the side of the hearse, you know, with the, the nameplate used to say, you know, X funeral home. I've changed those. On one side, it says Lord Dave. On the, on the other side, it says last responder. Um, but yeah, at, the, at the grocery store, everybody's always looking at me crazy. So my typical response to those folks is, what? It's not the first time cold meat's been thrown back here. That usually gets people to run away pretty quick. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. That is great. That is great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah I've seen said, the uh, So, yeah, every year on Halloween, I usually park it in the front yard and, and give candy. I'll sit in the back of it and give candy out the back of it. Um, but this past Halloween was a little different um, on how we did trick or treating. So, uh, I just kind of cruised around the neighborhood, you know, just kind of honking the horn. And it's, it's got kind of a musical horn that plays odd music. <laughs> Um, but my wife said, you know, 364 days of the year, you're the weird guy. But tonight, you're like everybody's hero. That's so, yeah, the, the kids around the neighborhood really like it on Halloween. One day a year is pretty good. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, cool. Well, we're about 20 minutes over the hour. Um Let's see what time, usually about the time we start wrapping it up because it usually takes us about 10 minutes to get through everything. Um, thanks a lot, uh, Dave, for joining us. It's uh, been a blast. I'm glad that, that you came on. I'm glad you agreed to come on. Um, it's been a lot of oh, fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good time. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, as you, this is usually where we uh, give our guests the time, the chance to give any shout outs or anything you're working on, any promotions, anything like that, that you're tied to. You want to say you already, already talked about the gaming store and I think that's awesome. If you guys want to jump on and, and uh, make some purchases and maybe even uh, share some photos with us of what you uh, picked up from the store. I think that'd be great. We'd love to show that, show them off on, on, on our, on our program. I think that'd be cool. Um, is there anything you want to talk about, Dave? No, just really just, uh, you know, encourage everybody to participate in, in RVE. Uh, it's a lot of really good classes going to be available. Uh, you know, hopefully I can deliver some, some good classes uh, as well. So I look forward to, to meeting people and just kind of sharing and enjoy the hobby. Cool. Cool. Uh, and when are your uh, classes? When can, so people can like write it down on the calendar. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to look at my phone. Um, one is Friday. Let's see. Hang on a second. Stop thing. All right. So we got realistic horror is Friday at seven uh, central. That's PM. Cool. Um, two hour class, um, which you know it'll be crammed full. It'll be two solid hours and at the end of which I'll say mentally I'll say there's a whole lot of things I really wish I could have got to um, and then Saturday at 10 a.m. Central is the weathering effects class and same deal um, I plan to I will be prepared to show more than I will have time to show so mm -hmm. yeah when we get to the end of that one it, it hopefully have a comfortable ending spot but uh, you know, there's, there's so many different things to talk about with both of those subjects that we won't get them all in two hours. Cool. cool. Jason, do you have any uh, parting shots, parting questions for Lord Dave, parting shots in general? No, I, I think we've covered most of the stuff. I mean, I'd sure like to have Dave back maybe after RVE. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll watch a couple yeah. of his classes and then maybe we can, you know, point by point dissect, you know, where, what he's done wrong. You know, like you yeah, like critique his class. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a critique. I, I forgot what the term was. We'll take screenshots yeah. of well, him doing something wrong and we'll show yeah. it. And, yeah. and there we I'll go. talk about how he could have done it better. Yeah. 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 We could do We're going to do that, that in live time be... right here on, on the crow's nest. We're going to just yeah. do it in live time. That yeah. We're going to stream like in random painting shows and we're going to critique it. Like, what was that? Three Science Theater 3000. 
That's yeah, what we should have thought. That's it. Wow. I yeah. know. Yeah. Well, we have. We're already going to do it. It's done. Oh, okay, there we go. Cool. Anyway, cool. it's been a blast, Dave. Thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, I, I think yeah. you're a very inspirational person. It's nice to have you at cons. It's great to have you in this community. Um, and I encourage anyone to take your classes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. pretty, pretty cool to hear. I, and, even, and likewise, I absolutely love being around you guys. Uh, hopefully we get to see each other in person again sometime soon. Yeah, might be Take nice. some classes. Get to know get to know Lord Dave if you don't know him via the classes and then the next in-person Reaper con or one of the other cons that David goes to. Just sit down to him and talk to him. If you're having just a meh day, David's going to turn it around for you and you're going to be really enjoying the con and really getting into it. Um, I have done that. He doesn't even know. I have sat and talked to him at various Reaper cons when I'm a little worn out and tired or whatever just to get recharged. Um, it's always been, it's always good to do that. Um, so yeah, thanks Dave for that. I really do appreciate it. So Justin, um, rating, who are we going to raid? We've had some good raids this time. I saw a raid from, um, Anne, uh, painting big. I meant to thank them and it went some people in chat thanked them. So thanks if anybody's still on from that raid. Um, we have, uh, Rhonda's show on Rhonda's bird with the brush Twitch channel is later this evening, if not relatively soon, right after the show. Where she's going to yeah, be digging sure into new paints. Yeah, yeah, check that out. She, I just kind of glossed over them. I'm really digging of the colors, which she'll show more. I'm really digging the Rutarki um, and the uh, Scent Flesh. These are really two cool colors. Um, if you're thinking about getting this paint set, another really cool is this Hard Suit Blue. It's really cool, good uh, NMM kind of blue. So. And there's a, I mean, there's a ton of others in there as well. Don't want to shortchange the other colors. Uh, Sadie, if Sadie's still on, Sadie did an excellent job with that. Um, I think Gene Van so, Horn calls oh, that and, hot blue. Uh, and I'm telling Bobby, uh, Justin, let's get some good music on the outro. Um, and Jackson is required to listen to it. All right. I'll go ahead and uh, start the outro music as we go into our raid here, which we're going to be raiding yeah, Cena yeah. Bush. And I wanted to take awesome. a second here while your uh, favorite song is playing here while I crank this up just a little bit. Not much. Don't it's worry. for clarification. It's the favorite song of the limited selection that we have. Michael's favorite song of all time. He said it's his number one top hits. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you guys very much. And thank you again, uh, David, for coming out and, and hanging out with us tonight. It's, uh, it's a pleasure as that always. My pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to run a D&D &D game, if you're going to run a D&D &D game, remember, hashtag full Frank. Hashtag full Frank. Yes, that can't be taken. Hashtag very full Frank. Frank. Yes. yes, full Frank. Hashtag full Frank it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to do something, hashtag full Frank it. Don't half Frank it, full Frank it. On that Don't note. Full on, <laughs> full on Franken. We better, we better <laughs> stop this right now. Just Thanks, guys. Have a great night. <laughs> hey, Justin. Yes. Justin, just for you, baby. Yeah. I appreciate that gummy bear. That's Wow. Uh, Two in an hour. That's impressive. Thank you guys very much. Ooh. Have a great rest of your night. And uh, have, a, have, a, have a good, what is it, uh, crow's nest uh, sayonara. Hmm. We're going to coin that phrase. That's for you, Michael. I'm going to crank this up. Here we go.